What's going on? Rob Fish here in the Bike Bandit Garage. In a world where go, go, go gets much of the glory, let's take a closer look at the unsung hero that is brake fluid. In order to fully understand what makes brake fluid so special and why it has the characteristics that it does, we first need to understand how the braking system on a motorcycle actually works. When you squeeze the brake lever on a motorcycle, the brake system transfers force from your hand into pressure on the brakes, either discs or drums to slow down your bike. Now back in the old days, this was simply done by cables, but nowadays a much more advanced braking system has become the standard on motorcycles. That is the hydraulic braking system. Check out this animation to see how the hydraulic braking braking system on a motorcycle works. When you apply pressure to the lever, it squeezes a piston inside the master cylinder, which puts pressure on the fluid inside the brake lines. Because fluid cannot be compressed, pressure increases in the entire system. This increased pressure squeezes the pistons down in the brake caliper together, clamping the brake pads onto the rotor and slowing your bike down. When you release pressure on the lever, a spring in the master cylinder pushes the piston back out. This relieves pressure in the system, and the suction that results pulls the caliper pistons back into place, letting the wheel spin freely once again. Aha! Aha! Hydraulic brake systems work incredibly well because they need virtually no adjustment, they transmit much greater force to the brakes than cables can, and you can modulate hydraulic brakes with a lot of precision, which is essential when riding a motorcycle. So now that you know how hydraulic braking systems work, you can see that the lifeblood of these systems is this stuff, the fluid inside them. But what's so different from brake fluid than, say, regular water that makes it so ideal for being used in a braking system? Well, to understand that, you have to understand what the main enemy of braking systems is, and that's heat. When you apply the brakes, your bike slows by friction created between the pad and the rotor. And that friction creates tremendous amounts of heat. And that heat is transferred right into the fluid. Because of that, brake fluid must have an exceptionally high boiling point so it doesn't boil and turn into vapor inside the brake lines. Vaporization of brake fluid is a big problem because unlike liquid, vapor is highly compressible. If brake fluid begins to turn into vapor, it will no longer transmit pressure the same way liquid does. And that's when you get that feel of a mushy lever and radically decreased brake performance. Water would never work as a brake fluid because it boils at such a low temperature. So the first component of brake fluid is that it has to have a very, very high boiling point. Secondly, brake fluid has to maintain the same viscosity under a wide range of temperatures for your brake system to work consistently. For example, let's just imagine you're doing a track day and you're going out for your first session of the day. You might leave the pits with your fluid at ambient temperature, let's say 75 degrees. But within a few laps, your fluid might become as hot as 375 degrees or more. Your brake fluid has to flow the same, so your brakes will feel the same at both temperature extremes. Next, we'll break down what types of brake fluids there are on the market and what makes them all different from each other. Here in the US, brake fluid is classified by the Department of Transportation, the DOT, and it has its own unique rating system. There are currently four types available, DOT 3, DOT 4, DOT 5, and DOT 5.1. Like we talked about before, the key component of brake fluid is a high boiling point. And the difference between each of these types of brake fluid is what that boiling point actually is. So generally speaking, the higher the number, the higher the boiling point, and the better that brake fluid will perform under hard use. Aha! But now let's break it down a little further. First of all, DOT3, DOT4, and DOT5.1 are in one category because they're made with similar chemicals. And DOT5 is in its own separate category, and here's why. These first three types are made with a base of chemicals called glycol ethers, which is a family of solvents. That's why you have to keep these away from paint finishes, because they'll damage it. Glycol ethers are great for brake fluid because they are very incompressible and have high boiling points. However, an unusual characteristic of these chemicals is that they have a strong tendency to absorb water from the atmosphere, usually straight from humidity in the air. Like we talked about earlier, water would make a horrible brake fluid because it boils so easily and would turn to vapor in the lines very quickly. So the fact that brake fluid absorbs water from the air is a problem, because as brake fluid ages, you end up with a certain percentage of water in your lines, and that causes major braking problems. That's why brake fluid is actually classified by both dry and wet boiling points. The dry boiling point is the boiling point of the fluid when it's new, and no water has had a chance to absorb into it yet. 
That's when your brake fluid's gonna work the best and when its boiling point will be the highest. Now, the wet boiling point is what results after brake fluid has become old and has absorbed a certain percentage of water. By DOT standards, that is 3.7%. Because the brake fluid has become part water at that point, the wet boiling point is actually much lower. Dot 3 has the lowest dry and wet boiling points of all three of these, but it's an older style of brake fluid and has been replaced primarily by Dot 4 in most vehicles these days. Dot 4 is the fluid that is currently the most widely used and it offers about a 10% increase in boiling point compared to the Dot 3, while not costing that much more. Dot 5.1 has an even higher boiling point and is for sport riding and even the occasional track day enthusiast. But there's also a newer type of brake fluid out on the market and that is Super Dot 4. And it's kind of a hybrid, almost a racing brake fluid and it's meant to be changed very frequently. The stuff is awesome, but again, it comes at a premium price. Costing about 50% more than a traditional 5.1 but some Super Dot 4s offer boiling points at 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Now here's an interesting thing about brake fluids. The higher you go in boiling points, the faster the brake fluid will absorb water from the atmosphere, and thus it should be changed more often. For example, Dot 3 offers a lower boiling point, but it won't attract water as quickly. Dot 5.1 offers a much greater boiling point, but it will absorb water much more quickly. And that there, my friends, is the trade-off. You can get a fluid with a higher boiling point, but you'll need to change your fluid more often and more frequently to maintain maximum performance. Now, earlier I mentioned that DOT5 is in its own category, separate from DOT3, DOT4, and DOT5.1. And that's because instead of having a glycol ether base, DOT5 has a silicone base. And that causes it to have a completely different property from the others. And it's also not going to absorb water from the atmosphere. And it's also not going to harm your paint if you happen to spill some. Uh, but you know what you need to know is, Silicone-based brake fluid is also more compressible than the others, so it's actually not going to give you the same braking performance. Just saying. 4 or 5.1 is going to be superior to 5. For the most part, though, you will find DOT5 used in Harley-Davidson's, while most of the other OEMs are going to use the more conventional glycol ether-based brake fluids. When it comes to motorcycle maintenance, most riders know that they have to change their motor oil and filter regularly. But for some reason, brake fluid tends to get forgotten about on many motorcycles. And many riders don't change it in accordance to their maintenance schedule. So with that said, let's talk about what you need to know to maintain your brake fluid the right way. The first and most important thing to make sure when you're maintaining your brake fluid is that you're using the right brake fluid. So there's two big things to take note of here. One, you should use the brake fluid your owner's manual recommends. But if you choose to, you can replace or just top off your existing brake fluid with a higher number. In other words, if your bike calls for a dot three, you can actually replace it with a dot four or a 5.1. And if it calls for a dot four, you can always move up to 5.1, but never ever go down to a dot three. The other thing to note, and this is very important, you should never mix dot five with any other type of brake fluid. Because it has a silicone base and the others have a glycol ether base, mixing the two chemicals will result in coagulation. In other words, you'll get a nasty gunk that will muck up your entire braking system and it'll give you roughly the stopping power of oatmeal. The only way to fix this is completely rebuilding and flushing the entire thing, which is a problem you definitely don't want to have. To help you avoid this, brake fluids are actually color-coded as you can see here. Dot 3, Dot 4s, and Dot 5.1, the glycol ether based fluids are always clear to kind of an amber in color. Dot 5, however, that's the silicone based fluid, is always purple. Remember that you can kind of intermix these to some extent, but Dot 5, it's always on its own program. So once you know what brake fluid to use, how often should you replace it? Most service manuals will tell you to swap your brake fluid every year or two. However, on the other end of the spectrum, if you're racing, you should probably be swapping your brake fluid every four to six months because racing puts your fluid through much more aggressive use. Here's why you need to change it regularly. Remember we mentioned how brake fluid absorbs water, which degrades its performance? To illustrate that, here's a chart showing the drastically lowered boiling points of old brake fluid. Once brake fluid has absorbed that 3.7% of water that we mentioned earlier, boiling points drop off roughly 30%. Makes you want to change your brake fluid right now, doesn't it? But what if you don't know how old your brake fluid is, like if you just got a used bike? Fortunately, there are ways to test your existing fluid, like this handy little tool from Bike Master. It measures the amount of moisture in your brake fluid in just seconds, and it indicates it with three little LEDs so you never have to guess about when it's time to change it out. It's an inexpensive tool that can be used on all of your vehicles, and it's a great addition to your toolbox. 
So there you have it. Now you know a little bit about how hydraulic brake systems work, about the different types of brake fluids that are out there, and how to pick the right one, and why it's so important to change it regularly. We really hope you found this video helpful. In the description below, you'll find links to all the products we discussed in this video, plus some tools to make swapping your brake fluid just that much easier. If this is your first time joining us here in the Bike Bandit Garage, remember to hit the red button and subscribe to our channel. With each new video, you'll be in the loop learning more about how to work on your motorcycle and saving money by doing the work yourself. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you soon. Now it's time to go ride. Aha! Aha! What do you know from funny?